for me tonight is a thank you. I, you know, I, I think a common thread throughout all of your stories tonight has been that other people have have arrived into your life and into your adventures and they've made it what uh, it truly is. And that's exactly the same for me. I'm usually talking about skateboarding a long way or paddleboarding a long way or just doing something really silly that people look at me funny for. And I've shaped my life around those lovely ideas that usually would be left in the pub. Uh, but life is so much more sparkly when you make them happen. And the last five years, undoubtedly, my biggest adventure has been the Yes Tribe. Uh, you know, I like like Shells was saying, like Tiffany was saying, like Andre, all of these amazing uh, ideas and journeys that we, we go on. Uh, I've been lucky to have so many. And around every single bend, I met a stranger who fast became a friend. And the loneliest that I felt for about a decade was when I came back home to the UK. I didn't really know anybody. And that's where the Yes Tribe started. I won't go into the, the whole spiel because you've all heard it before, you know, 19 people meet underneath a train station clock in June 2015 and have a camp out in the next week and the next week. And now if you look at the main Yes Tribe group, there's over 16,000 people and uh, I'm reliably told that they're all real. <laughs> and it's amazing. I, I have this uh, enormous community behind me and I every single one of us can say exactly the same thing and that's what the Yes Tribe uh, has been created for it's a it's about creating an environment where we can all go off and do whatever adventures however silly and crazy and unexpected uh, because we know that there's there's loads of other people out there right there who will support us because we're passionate about it that's all it takes uh, all of this doesn't happen by accident, not anymore. It did kind of at the beginning, but now there's there's a bit of a structure behind all of this. And it's a quiet structure, which is why the, mag the, the magic is allowed. And that that's why tonight is a thank you. Uh, while, while that first camp out just started with a little idea to invite people from Facebook camping and hoping that no one turned up with an ax, <laughs> it's, it's turned into something so much bigger. This is one of a regular series of calls we have with our volunteer team. We've got 93 people in the say in the in the Yes Tribe team at the moment. Many of them are tribe leaders in regions. We've got a number of different countries with their own growing Yes Tribes. Uh, those who don't lead tribes lead events or you know run the social media channels. And Jen's on here or like Joe started this year and Tanya continues to run Yes Yes Stories. And there's this. It's really hard when when people say what what is the Yes Tribe. It's incredibly difficult to explain because there's so many different sides to it now. But at its heart, it's creating that supportive network and allowing nudging people towards finding out what they're really capable of and believing that they can do that. And all of these faces you see, plus so many more, are at the heart of that. I'm just looking at this this screen grab from this this team hello and realize there's absolutely no one in the bottom right corner. <laughs> and I think that's exactly how it should be. That's the best type of leadership when you just kind of shrink off into the background. And there's so many unknown faces uh, behind behind the Yes Tribe. And I'd just like to say a quick thanks to some of them. I can't say thank you to all of them, uh, but I did ask on the on the team group earlier for some to share their memories of the year. Uh, we hold all kinds of events and the the premise of the Yes Tribe is that accessibility and diversity as much as possible should be should be allowed and encouraged. And money is at, at the heart of us stopping or stopping people doing so many experiences. That's why there's Yes Stories in, in the London pub uh, every so often when we're allowed, when the pandemic's not happening. Does anyone remember those times? And Yesterville, our annual festival, those are the paid events. Everything else is free. Uh, and 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 that's always going to be the case. No one makes money from from the Yes Tribe. All of those volunteers that I mentioned, they they do it because they believe in it. And uh, that hasn't been an easy journey, but it's. I really do believe that the Yes Tribe is a unique community because it is it is voluntary run. Uh, so just an example of the events there. So far. And we've got a month to go. 769 events hosted, 640 competitors in the lockdown Olympics, which was awesome. 
13 and a half thousand people have attended our events this year in a year where you know social isolation has been at an all-time high it's been so important to do many of these online events we've had over 170 virtual tea breaks and over 230 dance parties and just a few examples uh john's there with the epic you know twin tonged beard um, what his, one of his good memories from this year, I managed to fit in a beer and a pizza evening at my local brewery and met these five lovelies, four of whom had never been to a Yes Tribe event. Michelle, uh, you know, has, has run so many Yes Tribe events over the years, but the pod club uh, and when we can get together, the pod in the park has been awesome. COVID's meant the pod club went online. So every month they've had lots of non-Londoners regularly attending, including Scottish Chicago Yes Tribe friends. Uh, going international, having conversations that really matter and to celebrate the one year podiversary in 2020. Oh yeah, the first global murder mystery yes party is coming up on Wednesday night. Andy Lean, legend that is Andy. He's one of the longest serving uh, Yes Tribe members and, and team members. Uh, he, he, Andy's our wild camping king. Uh, and this was the last in-person wake up wild camp out, which was canceled at the last minute because of the windy conditions and people traveled miles to get to what then became a torchlight picnic. But, you know, it, it just wasn't safe to stay out because of falling branches and, and whatnot in the high winds, but everyone just took it with great grace and a warm heart. And, and that, that sums up what we do, uh, Andy's an absolute legend. Please get along to a real life camp out when we're allowed once more with Andy. Uh, Rachel, uh, who's the Yes Tribe leader in London, she helps work, uh, uh, run the Yes Woods as well, our community woodland just west of London. Uh, one of her best memories is the first London Yes Tribe quiz, masterminded by the brilliant Kirsten, um, who is taking this photo. You know, this, this is another, uh, another regular theme of Yes Tribe events. Usually the person organizing them takes a photo, so they're never in the team photo. Um, and then being joined by a random American tourist who found the event because it was the only quiz on Central London in, on in Central London on a Wednesday night, and they won. Um, that's awesome. Yes, Tribe winners. Uh, Sarah connect with, connecting with some amazing souls through mindfulness and movement, and creating a shared space to process some of the emotional challenges of this year. We use breath and movement to come back to ourselves. Sarah's done all kinds of stuff as well, including some very awesome and funny jam sessions, <laughs> which I highly recommend if they come back. Um, Dom, Dom's an absolute legend. Uh, he's, uh, he's, he's organized so many events down in the Devon and Cornwall tribe, and he's just got that type of enthusiasm that inspires you every single time you, you talk to him. Uh, so Dom, Dom says, finding my inner adventure that I buried under the career and weighted ideals that didn't really fit who he really was. Uh, his best memories have been to watch people grow through the connections and support that they found in the tribe. He's been overwhelmed by the emotions he's seen as people find somewhere and a people that they feel they belong to. Watching strangers arrive and friends leave has given me a massive lift this year. That's, per I mean, that's, that's the yes tribe through and through. Dom, you legend. Uh, Jen, uh, we snuck in the Yes Tribe Hertfordshire Yes stories before lockdown. Look at those people in the same room. <laughs> it's like an alternate parallel universe. Oh, that will come back soon. Um, Ian, attending the regular tea breaks, which uh, helped me to get through lockdown, traveling to the other side of the world at the start of the year and being able to meet up with other people from the Yes Tribe, uh, being able to introduce my girlfriend to the tribe at the Yes Woods, even though the weather was miserable, no one complained. Yeah, we're not complaining about it. Uh, and if I'm allowed a bonus one, of course you are. Uh, being a co-author of the biggest book of Yes, the effort that went in by so many people to make it happen. Thank you all so much. Yeah, and a special mention to the big, the biggest and the bigger book of Yes, not in that order, uh, edited by John Doolin and over a hundred Yes drivers have contributed to that over, over the trilogy over the last couple of years. Excellent Christmas present, P.S. Have a look on Amazon. And there it is, Charlotte Elizabeth hosted so many dance parties throughout lockdown, uh, three a day. I mean, that is epic costumes and all. And then of course, who can forget Jen George's lockdown Olympics. That was an amazing couple of weeks and hundreds and hundreds of people got involved. If you didn't uh, know about the lockdown Olympics or you haven't seen this stuff, have a look at the Say Yes More YouTube channel and just have, just seriously watch all of the videos make yourself an enormous meal and and just watch all of the films it will make you laugh and cry uh, absolutely brilliant and then you know i think a, a a big one to joe bradshaw who decided you know as as all, all your 
these tribe events start with someone's idea and um joe decided that yes stories online would obviously be a, a great idea at the beginning of lockdown and she she took the baton and ran with it and we're we're still running with it now tanya tanya took over and a couple of other people in, in between so a massive thanks to joe and everybody else who's who's come up with all of these ideas that bring people together we've got such a massive host of different types of events and gatherings it's amazing no anecdotes no feedback no picture just this says joe that's awesome and i should also thank ems uh, who isn't only on this photo but is also just there <laughs> um ems is behind the scene uh constantly every single day uh, she, we met through the Yes Tribe, um, and now she's my wife, she can't escape, and although uh, she probably wouldn't have chosen it, she, do you want to share the screen? Come on. Come on, I'm alright. Slide on in, baby. <laughs> um, Hi, everyone. <laughs> uh, although, although she wouldn't have chosen it, uh, Em's pretty much given up her career over the last four years to to work on the Yes Tribe almost full time. And so many of the things you see online and the meetings you've heard about wouldn't happen because of the work, uh, without the work that she puts in, whether it's you know, designing graphics on Canva or uh, doing little accounting bits and bobs, dressing up the Yes Bus for the events when we could have people there and on and on and on. You know, she does a million things. And, and the Yes Tribe really functions with her. You know, the, I think one person can have an idea, but it takes a real team to uh, to make it count. And uh, Em's my strongest teammate ever, uh, and she, you know, she deserves so so many more kind of platitudes and uh, and gratitude than she's given. And I always kind of think, you know, you're unlucky Em's, you're never going to be paid through say yes more, not properly, <laughs> um, because we. We just don't have any paid events so, so good. but if i did ask her what how she'd like to be paid i'm pretty sure that at some point she would have said alpacas <laughs> <laughs> um great. so we've got uh we've we've got a massive adventure of our own coming up and it kind of starts with the idea of the yes bus which I'd, ha I'd had for about a decade before the, the yes tribe came along and the bus is a countryside hq and for the last three years, it sat in the countryside in Brinsbury, Brinsbury campus in, in Sussex. And it's been an amazing place. You know, most, most weekends during the warmer months, people have come on down and learned different skills and uh, just in, enjoyed the whole site, camped out and enjoyed stories around the fire and on and on and on. Uh, it hasn't always been easy uh, being down there. One thing, you know, Ems and I have spent hundreds and hundreds of, of days on the Yes Bus over the last three years. And uh, we weren't able to really do everything that we'd always wanted to do because we, we didn't own the land. And it's the idea started to drip through over the last few years, uh, definitely the last couple, that we'd, we'd love at some point to find a bit of our own land, which we could call, say, Yes More HQ and maybe run a little business alongside so we could bring some bring some money in and you know afford the food and stuff uh but also you know be able to do everything that we'd always wanted to do with the yes bus without covid we probably wouldn't be able to tell this next next bit of the story but uh covid you know slowed it slowed us all down like it or not um i was really burned out from work over the last couple of years and you know not having any work uh was a pain in the ass at the beginning as i'm sure as so many of us uh can feel but it also meant that we had to reprioritize and remember what was important and for us we had time then to think okay and uh let's make let's make this happen and there's so many reasons not to try and find your own land like money is a, a massive one we we didn't we certainly didn't have all of it and uh i remember a conversation with them and uh, saying you know I don't know if we're ready for this and the commitment of buying our own land and uh, the pressure of planning permission and running a business and the customer service that comes with that kind of stuff and she just looked at me with a stern look which she usually doesn't do you have a stern look to give people yeah it was like that but kind of sexier <laughs> and uh, I don't do stern. <laughs> and and she said look this is what we want from our lives what are we waiting for let's go and it's just such an amazing attitude. We started looking for places and we found one and we put an offer in, uh, in, in early July. 
in October, uh, we moved the Yes bus out of Brinsbury with the help of uh, a few hardy Yes tribers. It was a wet weekend. And we left this lovely spot uh, and the bus started driving north, parking midway because our purchase hadn't completed and we were still waiting. <laughs> um, so the bus left Brinsbury, loads of memories still there, but ca carried on those four wheels. Well, I guess you could say eight wheels because it was towed out. It didn't feel being eaten by squirrels for three years. <laughs> but this is the next plan, the big sky hideaway. And our, our, our plan is, is vast and it's going to take years and years. But for us, it's a community effort. The most important thing about this is that we're going to be able to create a space, exactly the space we want that we can invite people to. Uh, so there's going to be camping and glamping. We're going to put a, an acre aside for permaculture, grow our own veggies. And then eventually, once we know what the heck we're doing, we'll, we'll run workshops to teach other people to do the same, however much space they live with. Um, I see the traveling family grinning there. Guys, you can grow veggies in your caravan. <laughs> we also really want to be an off-grid off test bit. Uh, test bed. The whole place is going to be powered by renewable energy. That's it. Um, well, and community. Uh, but we're also opening up to local universities uh, if, they, if they want to develop new technologies and, and use the land. We're putting aside a little bit of space to plant 2,000 trees over the next few years. We'll have all kinds of outdoors events, including Yesterville 2021, it's coming back. Uh, uh, workshops and retreats and skill sessions. If you, if, you, if you run retreats or you're looking for a venue, you know, come and stay for a while and, and bring some people and hang out in the woodland. And of course, uh, honouring the first ever Yes Tribe April Fools on 1st of April 2017. Well, finally, this is not an April Fools. We will be getting alpacas. We know where they're coming from and they'll be with us within the next few months. Probably arriving on April Fools Day. <laughs> yeah, if we can get them to arrive on the 1st of April, that would be brilliant. Uh, other news. <laughs> this is this is how we spent today. So um, we've been building a little model of Big Sky just so we can work out where the buses go. Uh, no joke, guys. Look at this. Um, so this is going to be blue and this is going to be black. Converted school bus, which is going to be our first glamping pod. We've even got lots of mini trees. It's just brilliant. What a great world. I've kept eBay in business this last week. But this is how we spent today. Who's the guy filming? Uh, he's a director called Nick from Ben Fogel's show, Make a New Life in the Country. Today was day one of filming. They're gonna be following us for the next year uh, as we make a new life in the country. <laughs> it's just totally ridiculous. I don't know how any of this happens, but it's, it's joyful. I can't, uh, we can't wait to share all of this with you. Um, here's the bus. So yeah, we're running a little launch crowdfunder at the moment, um, and it's not the ideal year to be running a crowdfunder, but just to kickstart our tree planting project, uh, you can adopt an alpaca or grab an early bird stay on the bus for up to six people. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in that, or you just want to share it to your outdoorsy friends, the, the address is crowdfunder.co.uk forward slash big sky hideaway, or just have a look at big sky oasis on Instagram or Facebook and you'll see the links through. Uh, so yeah, that's that's a big old adventure for, for MZ and I, and I'm glad to say that for all of your voluntary work, you'll be getting paid in alpacas, chickens, a cat and a dog. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks, MZ. <Auntie. laughs>